scored 90 today. What's it like from your team offensively throughout the game? I love the fact that we shared the ball. I'm not saying we haven't shared the ball throughout the year, but uh, just making this the simple plays. Uh, we did a really good job early on of, you know, not turning the ball over, you know, making sure that we you know, get the ball and inside and, you know, let Hunter operate. Uh, he did a really good job of being patient. When he got doubled, he made the right play to guys on the perimeter. And so uh, when we playing like that, you know, it's a really tough team to guard. Chris? Just talk about what you said to them at halftime. You guys came out of the gate and then also Joey Baker's minutes for you tonight. Well, I talked about defending, um, you know, how we have to, of course, be in a short prep, you know, get to our habits. And, you know, we're not going to know every set. Of course, they have a lot of sets that with a lot of different movement. Uh, with the shooting that they have on the floor, uh, they're going to get some open looks, stay the course when they do make some. But more importantly, just make sure we can test every shot, handball can test, make some adjustments on the ball screen defense. But there were times where on our ball screen defense where Shoemate got open off the pick and pop, and I uh, had to make an adjustment with that. But then the apply from our guys, being able to apply that, uh, and holding this, this team to 40% in the second half, uh, that was big for us. Jeff, uh, Duan really <coughs> mentioned uh, sharing the ball. Doug had eight assists. I guess what did you see from his passing and decision making tonight? Well, Doug made plays uh, uh, to open guys, and you know, primarily you know, with Hunter with some of the, the hedging. You know, Hunter was able to slip to the basket. Um, he also did a really good job. We came off a ball screen when it was the drop coverage, being able to put pressure on a drop big, and then uh, you know, logging the sleep by looking away, dropping a pass off to him, uh, whether it was a, a layup or a foul that led to a free throw. Uh, but then also in transition, you know, getting out in transition and uh, making sure that we did not allow the defense to set up and, Doug did a really good job of putting pressure uh, while we were trying to get transition opportunities for, for our guys. So uh, very balanced on all ends, uh, but very balanced with those five guys that started. But then we also got a big lift from, from T. Will uh, with some of his minutes was huge for us. And then, you know, Jace came in defensively, you know, and uh, keeping the guys in front, which they had you know, some guards that, to make either plays for themselves or they can shoot the ball off the dribble or they can get to the paint, paint excuse me, and call habit for you. Uh, Jace did a really good job of uh, bodying them and also uh, not allowing them just to get easy drive bys. John? Duan, uh, Joey was in here earlier and said he's compliant for next year. Joey was in, was in here and said he's compliant for next year. How optimistic are you that you can get that? And <laughs> you know, Michigan, I mean, it's a great school academically. Uh, and Joey being a Duke, you know, he's academically, he qualifies. But there's also a few other hurdles that we have to uh, that dive deep into. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to try hard. We're going to give it our best shot. You know, we would love to have him back. Um, and not just because of, you know, shooting. But just overall, the person, and he just fits in the locker room. Um, the guys enjoy playing with him. Uh, he's now also opening up, becoming a better leader. You know, at times, you know, when you knew, uh, you don't want to uh, step on anyone's toes. Or it's hard to have those uncomfortable conversations with guys uh, because you, know, you, you want to be liked by him. But at the same time, uh, you know, he, he understands that he's been at big games now and he sees that the guys trust him, that uh, we, we need his leadership. And it will be nice to have him back next season. Austin? Juwan on the redshirt question, is that also uh, a possibility for Jalen? And you know, they need him right now. Looks like he might need some minutes. First with Jalen, we want to get him healthy. Health, that's the key. You know, a young man has dealt with uh, some tough injuries. Achilles, and now AC, ACL, and I'm tr trying to uh, get him in contact with Clay Thompson. Uh, I'm going to continue working on that because Clay, who's been through it before, I uh, understand what it's like on dealing with those two tough injuries and the timetable and you know, the mental part of it that really gets to you know 
how you can stay dialed in, but also um, how you can not get where you're at a dark place, and that that can't happen. Jalen has been great. I think it's nice to see that you know, he's staying around the guys, and around the team, and, and everyone loves him. And he's such a smart guy, but he's also is such an all-in kind of person. That would be nice to see uh, Jalen get healthy, and then uh, we'll go from there. Jordan, uh, Will's been starting for a few games now, and great <coughs> energy. And I think in the first half, he had a three ball, and it looked like like that's what he he's good at shooting a three ball. Is where is that in his game, and can that develop be developed in more so in next year? Well, Will, Will is a freshman, and uh, you know the game is now you get the reps, and as you get more reps, um, as you're out there, you become a little bit more comfortable, and the confidence the starts to pick up and. Will has a chance to be, uh, I look at it as a captain of our team, which is uh, something that you just don't, you just get, you know, you have to earn it. And it, you earn it with your character, your hard work, because he's one of the hardest workers on our team. Uh, puts in countless hours in the gym, but also in the classroom, uh, which make, makes him elite level. Uh, and I just see like uh, over years to come, you know, he'll be, a guy that potentially potentially can break some records here at the University of Michigan. Uh, but first, uh, I will start with the academic, all academic team. But overall, the game, we trust him out there. Uh, he'll continue to keep getting better. Tony? Yeah, you want Jeff Howard not available tonight. I wonder, was there a setback since Rutgers, or what, what is his status? Jet has been injured all season long for us, unfortunately. Uh, but Jet, uh, He's a competitor, and I've told you guys this all season, um, dating back to his first injury that he's, he had a uh, Virginia game. And he rushed back, played in, in London versus Kentucky, and uh, felt that he should not play, but he was going to make sure that he stepped out on that floor and be there for his teammates. But, uh, you know, like nowadays you hear about guys, you know, taking time off. Uh, and, uh, I don't, I don't know what that is, and you know, Jet, Jet has been a part of the Howard DNA. Where he, he knows that you know, he has a passion for the game of basketball, and every time since he was younger, no matter if he got injured, he always picked himself up and continued to keep competing. Cut his eye before he was out there, the next play with stitches. You know, <laughs> that, that's how he's wired. So um, when he had the, the injury, re-injured the other ankle um, after what, the Michigan State game. Came, well, he fell on, no, he came down on Hauser's foot, and Hauser was going back to get a rebound, and he turned it pretty good. He just go back to the replay, but he came back out <laughs> and played again. And so um, he went and saw a foot, it was a foot ankle specialist, and uh, as of right now, we're gonna look at this thing day to day, let him heal, and then uh, we'll see. We'll go from there. But he wanted to be out there for his teammates today. But, but no reaction. He was emotional, too. <clears throat> Very emotional that he couldn't play today. Dave, you want to close this out? Uh, we were talking with the players earlier about the decision to <coughs> play in the NIT. Um, some teams decided not to. Um, when we asked the players, they said there was no question in anybody's mind. Was uh, From your perspective, how did the players step up to potentially well, you know, I look at it like this. So, th there were, we were a team that brought the basketball to the park. And the other two teams, and I mean like the five guys, you know, there was one team that had five, and another team had five. In Michigan, we had our five, but we brought the basketball. The other two teams didn't have their basketball. We brought the basketball, and so it's time to play. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our basketball and go home because they didn't pick us to play in the first game because the other two teams, the other five was allowed to play. So um, we're not gonna cry over spilled milk. We're not gonna act like we're entitled. We're not gonna act like it's beneath us. Um, our season has been a season built on adversity. Unfortunately, injuries. We have a young team that's growing in so many areas. 
And we got chosen for the NIT. We respect the opportunity. We appreciate it. And we're going to go out there and play because this this is not only going to help grow us out there on the court, but this is great life lessons that we can gain from this and that we're going to also grow from this. And so we're not going to be the team that takes our basketball and not let the other team play with it. Thank you very much, Coach.